Welcome back to our Sunday Truth Talk. Welcome, truth seekers, true selves from all over the world. My name is Yona Brindis. I am your living true self radio. And I'm coming to you today to talk about something that has come to my attention, namely how to regain trust in oneself in times of uncertainty, in times of confusion. And I want to send out a big thank you to the Sacred Self Healing Community here on Skype who's helped me out this morning with a subject that I can come up with for you to engage you more, to hopefully get some questions from you, for you, and to illuminate the larger aspects here of energetic sensitivity, energetic perception, some of you are empaths, some of you are just simply people who are seeking truth. And I am seeing you already, wonderful. I want to start out with a poll, namely, what is your frustration right now? Do you feel powerless, anxious? Do you feel hopeless or just generally pessimistic? Do you feel goalless or unmotivated? Or do you just feel confused and blocked in general? What is your greatest frustration right now, guys? What are some of the things that you cannot really connect with right now that you know is in you, but you, you don't feel like you can trust in it? What are some of those things? And I see you. Thanks, guys, for coming here on Sunday mornings. I'm an energy healer, energy trainer, and energy coach. And last week I came to you as an educator, as a teacher, and we went into the details of this etheric combobulation that we feel right now, where if we don't have the vocabulary, we don't really know how to talk about it or how to identify this. And we went into the details of the unseen, and um, this is very important here when we want to get a a true picture of what is actually going on. But then sometimes we forget to go into the day-to-day, the, the more sort of pragmatic point of view. And I want to guide you back into these everyday choices, these everyday feelings of what our reality is and how we can change this. So life is really this, this constant vacillation between going into detail, maybe making corrections at one particular part in our life, maybe our relationship or our job or where we live or you know what our goals are. And then we go back out into the larger picture and we look into how it's all working out and then we get the feedback of, you know, does this even work? Does this even you know, bring us uh, uh, any results that, that are in alignment with my goals. And then we need to go back to looking at the details of this, right? Maybe there's something I'm not seeing. Maybe there is something that is blocking me right now. Maybe there's something with the way I'm perceiving myself or my conditions right now. Or maybe there's something with my goals or with my expectations that I need to change. So life is is this constant sort of dealing with uncertainty, going into the larger perspective, some kind of inventory of it all, and then look into the details again and see which of these these factors, these parameters, can I change. And when we lose trust in ourselves, then we lose the connection to Um, any of these aspects we might not be seeing the conditions that we are in correctly we might not see that we have choices we might not be able to realize that some of our goals are unrealistic or the way we see ourselves our self-image for instance that that doesn't match up and that we are running into sort of an inner fragmentation as we call this in energy work or that, uh, you know, the, the way we approach it and, and, and what we focus on and what we prioritize, that that's not the right approach. Or 
that our values are kind of skewed maybe because we've had trauma or um, things that, that are holding us back, things that, that we are afraid of to face, all right? And so uh, when it comes to like really wiggling our way through this this uncertainty and coming up with something that can make us feel competent, that make, can make us feel like we can tackle anything no matter what it is and all I really have to do is to sit here in, in my center and be cool, you know, and, and deal with things as they arise. So when we lose trust in ourselves, we lose this ability, this ability to, to connect with, I can handle whatever comes at me. I, I do not know what will come at me, but for as long as I know who I am, as I know what my values are, as I you know, align my actions and my thoughts and, you know, my decisions, my choices to that, for as long as I'm truthful with myself, I can handle what comes. And even with this kind of mature stance in life, we still have to recognize that things change, that we cannot control everything and that, you know, our our ability to adapt then basically becomes what makes us feel competent. So the, the wiser, the more mature we get, the more we learn to overcome adversities and therefore learn to trust in ourselves. But even someone who's wise and mature can get stuck in this momentary place of not knowing where to look, getting really sort of wobbly, getting really confused or blocks, blocked. So I'm, I'm showing the results here in the video for you. And it's not many of you who have um, responded to this, but I can see a trend already. And that is that most of you right now f feel frustration in, 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 in the confusion that is going on and not really knowing what to look at, maybe not really knowing what to change. And this is a problem because we, we can, um, you know, our view, our perception of our current situation can get skewed. We can get caught in details. Uh, we, like I've uh, just mentioned, we can become narrow-minded. <clears throat> we can, you know, zoom out too far and lose the connection to our inner self. We can, you know, uh, really get dependent on, on outer factors sometimes if we look at just or if we focus just at these outer factors, okay? So if I, you know, get all hung up on uh, the corona situations, for instance, then it's very difficult for me to access, uh, it, you know, things in me that, that create sort of a, a larger vision of my life because there is no way of telling how long this is going to last, how this is going to develop, and therefore, there can be a block in me that says, well, for as long as I don't know how this is going to develop and how this is going to get resolved, <clears throat> I cannot make any plans in the future. And here is the narrow-mindedness. Who says so? All right. So yes, uncertainty is part of life. And a big part of maturity is to accept that. To accept that there is an an unknown factor in whatever it is that we do. <clears throat> but wisdom is to understand that sometimes these uncertainties, these un adversities can make us wobble. They can make us unhappy. They can make us unfulfilled. And those are feedbacks. Those, that, that's a feedback from ourself. Namely telling me that something isn't lined up, something isn't in balance, something isn't true, all right? And so if you, you know, want to get the perspective of, of a coach, you know, who helps people to, or guides people through these wobbles, through these uncertainties, through these times of lack and self or lack of competence, you know, like this, this feeling that you can handle no matter what, all right. It is the, in, in the reframing first, you know, where you look at things more from the standpoint, okay, 
maybe there's something I'm not seeing. So let me start from scratch here. Let me pause for a moment. Let me take an inventory. Okay, let me look at where these feelings of inadequacy come from or where these frustrations or sometimes even resentments come from, where my depression comes from, where my disconnection comes from, where my unhappiness comes from, all right? And where this, this, this deep sort of questioning myself, you know, this, this sense of self, who am I? And what is my purpose? And why am I here? Where this comes from? This is basically what a coach does. A coach helps you to, 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 to find your roadmap through this, to navigate through this, right? And then um, also seeing the truth of it. You know, what am I doing in order to cope with all of this? What am I doing to deal with all of this? Maybe... I'm, I have a tendency to hide or maybe I have a tendency to numb myself or maybe I have a tendency to escape in sort of in, instant gratification stuff. We talked about the dopamine trap last time and how, you know, uh, us uh, sort of just going for the next high, the next sort of thrill, all right, how this can create even more unfulfillment and unhappiness in us. And, and some of us uh, don't do that, but they they go for... A, a, a different variation of that which is a seeking constantly seeking something constantly sort of trying to get one up on somebody else or you know trying to to look into the future and trying to control the future trying to anticipate things trying to to be smarter than others you know the toilet paper syndrome and some of us really go into our addictions, you know, simply because we, we, we don't know how to handle it. And then we go for the next best thing that gets us sort of through the thing, you know. This is the coping, all right. And we, we do food binging or Netflix binging or gaming or sex and porn or whatever, you know, can give us just for now a better feeling. And the big problem with this is that we never really feel competent through this, right? If we constantly just go for the next best thing, we can never actually feel that we can handle something because we, we have to always find the next best thing. We have to always seek the next thing. So I, I want to uh, add your guys' comments here so some of you feel completely calm. Uh, or completely blocked, Jerry, I see. So you go from one to the other state, this vacillation that I talked about earlier. Yes, and uh, some of you des can't decide for the poll here because obviously this is a bit linear, but it feels a bit closer to goallessness and unmotivated and yet also like stuck, okay? So yeah, stuckness, Sheila, is, you know, a form of, of not feeling motivated and not feeling motivated can come from feeling goalless because most of us need this sort of next thing all right to to activate you know this this energy that it takes to actually go for it yes and some of us actually feel powerless yeah and this is of course you know very very uh complex in us it's probably a combination of all of this all right, so you guys are all spot on. So today I wanted to help you um, to, to come up with a little bit of a strategy here and, and be more your coach rather than your teacher, all right? And uh, if you don't know this, if, you, if this is the first time you come into these two self uh, two talks uh, here on Sundays, uh, I'm founder of Trans Coach Energy Healing and Energy Training, and there is a whole platform there for truth seekers and, and people who are interested in consciousness development and discovery and energy training. So there's ongoing sessions, ongoing webinars every day. There's something different. We have daily Skype meditations, lots of free resources, obviously, YouTube channel with lots of videos where the, the truth talks get posted as well. We have an online course. We have uh, uh, programs, personal programs, and of course, personal sessions that you can um, book with me or any of the other wonderful trans coaches that we have that we have here at Transcode. So, 
please understand that you know feeling stuck or feeling you know uh, like you you've temporarily lost the, tr the the trust in yourself to to change something or to to get yourself motivated or to get out of your uh, s stuckness maybe in form of addiction or to get out of your powerless all right is a skill all right this can be learned this can be trained all right and <clears throat> the goal overall this is this is something very important to understand the goal is not to feel like you you can um, succeed in everything that you try the goal is to regain trust in yourself and trust comes from bringing all these things that are fragmented in you back together so last time we talked about etheric attacks and nightmares and uh, you know how uh, these these unseen energies and darkness and so forth how they can even get a foothold in us and uh, you know if you will powerlessness and not trusting in oneself is part of this inner darkness all right how could this even get a foothold in me in the first place and the reason for that and this can be seen um, through energy work is that we got too fragmented there's something missing there there's a glue missing that can make us whole <clears throat> after all health energetic health emotional health physical health even mental health and spiritual health, they are defined by the level of wholeness, by the level of integrity that a person can feel from within. This doesn't mean that we have to have everything figured out. It doesn't mean that we have to have all answers. It doesn't mean that we have to succeed in everything. It means that we know what the glue is, what the essence is of all of this. So, <clears throat> taking myself as an example here you know I come to you as a coach but I'm also a teacher I'm also a mother I'm also a wife I'm also a daughter I'm also a sister I'm also a friend I'm also a woman I'm also a spiritual warrior I'm also um, a baker I'm also a pet owner I'm also uh, a Scandinavian I'm also a citizen of the United a resident of the United States okay so there's so many facets to me that um, you know success becomes relative okay can I trust in myself and all these areas that I am you know capable of dealing with everything that uh, comes to me no I can't but can I trust in the essence in me can create the glue basically the roadmap you know the template for solutions or for guidance for any of these different parts of me or different situations in me and the answer to that is yes if I know who I am if I know what my values are if I know what my priorities are if I'm aware of, of which part of me I am relying on and focusing on, then it becomes a lot easier for me to discern what I am experiencing and whether or not this is even in truth, whether or not this is even integrous. So most of the cause here, the, the core cause for us losing trust in ourself and feeling powerless okay has to do with having lost this essence having lost our integrity and how does this happen well this is you know something that we are currently experiencing here a lot in this global situation all right so it's unprecedented there's a lot of talk there's a lot of news there's a lot of bombardment that is coming from the outside and therefore we are all in our focus getting pulled into this external view not that there's anything wrong to look at you know problems such as environmental problems um you know social injustice uh, economy and so forth from a global perspective there's nothing wrong with this but sometimes by by zooming out too far and just looking at the greater picture, we can 
you know, lose the connection to our own life, all right, our own individual life, okay? If I remember being, you know, I don't know, like seven or eight years old, and I, I was always very interested in, in astronomy and the solar system and everything, and then somebody told me, I guess a teacher or something, well, one day the sun will burn out, um, it's going to happen in billions of years, but then, you know, it's the end of our solar system. And I remember for a whole entire week, I was, I was pulled into a, an anxiety that the sun would burn out. Do you guys know what I mean with this? It's like when you look too far outside of everything, you lose the connection with, you know, the essence of, of who you are. So it's this constant in and out, inner and outer, internal and external that we need to keep in balance that makes us become able to connect with our essence, with, with what makes us whole. <clears throat> and in, in the English language, that's called integrity. That's when we uh, can combine all these parts and when they are all aligned to, you know, sort of where we see ourselves, what our sense of self is and our sense or the vision of, of where we want to go. Yes, Sheila, and you are bringing up a very interesting aspect into this here. You saying yeah, there's a strange feeling of waiting out. Waiting out, like, you know, waiting and not seeking. Yes, and part of that, guys, Siri, you, 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 you're mentioning the same thing. The part of that, guys, is this polarization this fragmentation that is coming in from the outside right now. Okay, so our focus when we look, you know, on TV or on our phones or whatever, is so far out there, okay, that it confuses us as to what to focus on. It, it almost makes our choices, our things here, in our personal lives completely irrelevant. It feels like we're powerless over this huge thing that is going on there. It's just like me getting pulled into the fear that the sun will burn out in three billion years, okay? <laughs> because it triggers something in you and that is sort of the fundamental of your own inner dualism, namely the, the fear or the, <clears throat> the awareness that you are mortal, that your life ends at some point, you know? And that's the, 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 the part here that is our... Uh, ego part, you know, that is responsible for helping us through this. And the problem with the ego part is, is that it tends to externalize. It tends to, you know, claim the successes, all right, but deflect all the failures. It tends to look at, uh, you know, how we can get through the next stage, you know, just through, you know, the like, next five minutes or you know, how we can get through this time. And, and news is telling us right now that there are uh, uh, even more uncertainties and, and pretty much every study that is being published uh, creates even more questions so there is nothing that we can hold on to as, as far as like guidance I mean our, our governments don't seem to be very well prepared they're just like basically trying you know and, and that's maybe the best you can do right now you know to go into this common sense and unfortunately the, the English language does not provide a really good word for this uh, common sense, you know, as in common, as in like mainstream, or common as in what most people think. Our job here as, as individuated selves, but also part of this global community, is to find our common sense, to take the information in, and to only take things to heart that really matter, that really have a value for us, all right? And then to come to this place uh, where we can form something like a feel thinking, you know, like a heart mind, where we take these things to heart that matter to us. What matters to us right now? What are some of these positive things that have already come out of this uh, corona situation? We've talked about this a few weeks back. There are some things that, um, especially for energetically sensitives, by the way, so don't feel guilty if you actually kind of like this situation a little bit because it's calm down sort of this outer bombardment in our direct environments all right it, it has slowed down life it has showed us what is truly essential it has showed us 
or is showing us what is sustainable and what is not, all right? But it has also created this waiting in us. And this is the part here that uh, makes you lose the trust in yourself because if you get too focused, and in this case, this has been done from the outside, if you get too focused on what other people tell you what to do, and if you just <clears throat> sit there and wait for answers from the outside, okay, then you will feel powerless because right now, really all the recommendations that we get from our governments or from, you know, sort of this common sense, all right, so what most people uh, think would be the best thing to do is to sit and wait and uh, to accept the restrictions of your freedom, your freedom to choose, your, the freedom you know, to move the freedom, you know, to, to create your life uh, or to live your life right now how you want it. And that is something that blocks you. So I want you to understand that if you feel stuck right now, if you feel powerless right now, if you feel frustrated right now, then this is the direct consequence of some of these things that I've been talking about here over the weeks, energetic stress, etheric bombardment, and you but basically, you know, externalizing the resolutions to others, okay? And others don't have solutions. So you feel like a victim. You feel like you can't do anything. And this is the part now when you want to get regain the trust in yourself and your own competency and your own, you know, higher abilities to resolve you know, issues that nobody has answers for, okay? <clears throat> you have to go back into yourself. You have to reconnect with yourself. You have to take an honest inventory. You have to focus on, you know, how can I discern the situation? Yes, we have an overall condition. Of course, our perception of reality and, you know, whether we see something as a restriction or an opportunity, whether we see limitations or whether we see chances, always depends on on what the overall setting is all right <clears throat> but if you look back just the last hundred years maybe think of your parents or your grandparents i mean they've gone through major adversities and did this prevent them <clears throat> excuse me and did this prevent them from having children from developing a you know business or uh, you know creating businesses uh, uh, developing uh, cool things in their lives has this prevented them from living no it has created adversities and they had to adjust in, in certain time periods of their lives and so do we humans in, in the whole entire course of history of mankind and that we have to deal with outer things but we cannot let this to be the determining factor we cannot let this be the focus of what we choose and, and who we are. We cannot give up our sense of freedom, our sense of self to the outer conditions. Then we become a bouncy ball. And then we're just like wobbling through our life and hope we survive our life. I mean, really, is this your goal to survive your life? Okay. There is a, as in coaching, you know, and most of you have probably heard this there is a major thing about uh, victimhood and and uh, shifting your perspective from being a victim to being a survivor but then to continue going to keep going from survivor to thriver and then to continue to keep going from victim to survivor to thriver to influencer all right so there are things beyond those limitations that we experience right now and when you lose trust in yourself that means you lose trust in future okay and you lose, lose trust in that life continues do you really think life is going to stop no your life is going to it's not going to stop your life is going to continue so beyond just the conditions that you are experiencing right now from the outside Let's take an inventory. Let's look at the reality of where you are right now. Okay, be honest with yourself. You know, look at your conditions. Some of these conditions you'll find out with the current approach that you have 
make you stuck right there. So let's align this here to, to the uh, overall situation with the lockdowns. Okay, yeah, there were certain things, certain plans that we had or certain things that we wanted to do here at Transcodes. We wanted to do our uh, annual workshop, live workshop in person in Iceland in June. We can't do this anymore, all right? So this is going to have to get moved to the winter solstice instead of the summer solstice. Well, it's actually not that, a bad, that bad of a thing. At first, I was in a lot of resistance to that, but then I'm like, oh, maybe that's a cool thing. It's a new experience and experiencing darkness and uh, with uh, uh, the uh, northern lights is, is a really cool thing too, all right? So... Going into you know your 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 conditions and and only seeing them as a limitation can make you feel stuck. So, my approach, most of our approach was that we assumed we took things for granted, that everything is going to be the way it was. And right now, one of the approaches that we all, where we all make a mistake with, is that we are kind of assuming or hoping that everything will go back to normal back to the old and that is a major problem because uh, the reality right now is showing that we're not going to go back to the old in fact many of you weren't even all that happy with the old so it's not actually something that you are aspiring to and yet your approach is you're sitting there and waiting for the old to come back guys there is something wrong there inside of you with the integrity and with what you focus on, your approach needs to be changed. All right, the governments here have, have uh, uh, produced an, a picture here that is bleak, that was based on initial statistics that weren't even scientific. You know, that if, uh, you know, we all get infected, then we have so and so many million deaths all of a sudden, and that will, you know, uh, be too much for the infrastructure, so we have to flatten the curve. Okay. At the time, based on the data that was there, that was probably the, the most common sense, all right? But now we're realizing that these measures, all right, the lockdown and, you know, the, the economic uh, recession and depression that is coming out of it will probably kill way more people than the actual virus. So what does this mean? It doesn't mean that everything was wrong that we did before. It just means that we have new information now. We have to adjust to this. We have to change the approach. So many of the countries right now are trying to open up to, you know, dampen the economic impact because based on, on new uh, data and the statistics are becoming more and more scientific now that there is a broader sort of significant uh, or representative uh, amount of data there, okay, showing that maybe the death rate isn't really that high. Okay, maybe, you know, that as we are testing more people, we'll find out, you know, that it's uh, just, you know, like maybe a spike and it's a novelty virus, obviously. So there's, there's an initial response to this, but that at the end of the year, at the end of the day, you know, we're not really going to have so many more deaths all together. We just had them, you know, sort of congregated at a certain time. Well, what are we going to do then? Does this mean that everybody was wrong? No, it means that at the time, based on the information that we had and based on the, 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 the value system that we had, that we made a choice and that choice now turning out to not be optimal, so we have to make a correction, all right, because the parameters have changed. And when parameters change in your life, that means you change your focus, all right, so when you feel like you are stuck, that means you have to go back and look at what am I even focusing on here? Am I focusing too much on the desktop? And does that give me like the impression that life is going to be over with? Am I, you know, focusing too much on, you know, uh, uh, perhaps my, my job loss or, you know, depending on where you live, this will be more prevalent for you or the, the loss of income, all right, or... You know, does this give me actually an opportunity to rethink things, you know, and to ask myself, you know, like, hmm, you know, I wasn't really happy with the situation before anyway. Maybe this is a good moment to reset and to restart and rebuild. Because everybody has to reset, restart, rebuild, right? It's not even discriminatory. It's just everybody 
has to start, you know, changing the focus. And so we learn that we can make corrections. We learn that we actually have choices. And as we do these corrections, and as little as they might be, they can be physical, they can be emotional, they can be mental, they can be social, they can be career-wise, financial, spiritual, or energetic. And ideally, you, we do this, we investigate this on all these different layers of our being, which I will do later in the energy tips for all the Patreon subscribers. But as we do this, as we start, you know, adjusting our choices, find back to our essence, you know, and come up with sort of a new approach, all right, we will regain the trust in self bit by bit. And as we do this, we just have to have to keep repeating this. We just have to keep going, make sure that our approach, our focus, our conditions, and our goal setting is all aligned. Okay, so let me walk you through this here real quick, but I want to read your comments first. Yes, you, you guys are uh, really active today. That's wonderful. Yes, there's a blurred vision. Okay, yes, and I've described that here. You know where this is coming from. This is, this is the, the, it's actually narrowed. Okay, so blurred or narrowed vision is kind of like the same. This is when we, you know, get sort of... Uh, uh, from the outside, you know, get focused on, you know, maybe just one aspect of things or, you know, when we can't see the forest for the trees. Yes, Syria, this is, you say it's more about waiting for the last pieces to fall into place. Now, this is not waiting. This can be a place of, of centeredness, okay? So we can be very centered and know that sometimes it's, it's the right approach to sit things out or to you know, breeze through things, okay, to not be reactive. That would be one of the big things that we have to look at here the weeks to come because there will be a lot well revelations and they will trigger even more polarization, even more fragmentation in us. And sometimes it's the smartest to breeze through those, you know, and as opposed to acting out, Okay, to really go and ask myself, okay, what's the essence here? And how does my essence respond to it? You know, is this even in alignment with truth for me? <laughs> yeah, so Susanna is, is sharing here. She, she's finding it hard right now to distinguish what's mine and what's the collective. I'm pregnant and at the moment never sure if the hormones influence me or everything else. Well, this is a special condition. So again here, what's your condition? Being pregnant means that you are under the influence of your hormones quite a lot. And even an energetically aware person like yourself, Susanna, will experience these, these hormonal fluctuations. Okay, and it's I, I know you personally a little bit, so I know this is not your first child. So um, go into the common sense that you already know. Understand that you are under a special condition that, that makes you even more susceptible. But yes, over the past weeks I've been talking about this a lot, this outer bombardment. And right now, um, you know, we are heavily bombarded from the outside. So there's no shame in actually realizing that, that your outlook on life and, 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 and your capabilities and your adequacy and your competence and so forth feels a little wobbly because we have been sort of brainwashed to look at only one perspective of this whole corona situation, and that is to prevent death. Okay, and that is not true because... This isn't going to lead to us all dying, okay? So th th there are much, you know, bigger problems that we have, quite frankly, if you're asking me, all right, namely the destructiveness of, of humankind and the low consciousness level of all our global leaders right now that concern me way more, okay? So you have been brainwashed to think, uh, to, to take on this perspective of powerlessness so that you would be more malleable so that you would be uh you know agreeing with uh, you know the, the the constriction 
and uh, the the more regulations and and things that, that limit your freedom. So that's the part here that comes with discernment. So distinguishing is one aspect of that. That means, okay, to, to take this inventory and say, okay, I'm pregnant. Then we have all this brainwashing. We have the death tolls. We have all this stuff that's coming in from the outside. We have the etheric bombardment. At night, we have probably have a lot of people in our environment that are uh, anxious or that, you know, that don't know what to do either. So there's a, a sort of a, a, a group dynamic uh, as well. And that is all influencing me. Okay, that's one. That's my condition. All right. That's distinguishing. But discerning is different. Discerning means, hmm, is this really true to me? Okay, how ca can we know if something is really true to me? We have to start ourselves more fundamental questions. How am I truly feeling? What are my needs? What are my goals? What do I truly want in my life? And how do I want it? And am I moving towards it? Or am I moving away from it? Is the focus of my actions, my thoughts, and my feelings towards you know, something that is life-promoting, that is, you know, life-expanding, or is it to its constriction? And discernment helps us to identify that because we can all get caught in these moments where we make choices that we are unaware of, maybe because we, you know, lost the connection to our awareness here, we, we fell asleep, you know, we went into coping, we went into, you know, just hiding or numbing, okay, and then we lose that touch with who we truly are and what we truly want and the ability to actually discern if the, the choices that we are making, if they're actually leading us towards or away from. And our true self, which is the culmination basically of our essence and the ability to discern truth, can inform us about that and then um, you know, give us the, the info, the guidance that can point us into the direction of what we need to change. So those of us who have, like say, um, particularly adverse conditions right now, all right, we have to be very, very conscientious about what to focus on, okay? Because there are so many things if we are under the influence of, of too much adverse conditions that uh, we cannot control. So we need to focus on the very things that we can control. All right. And that comes then through looking at our priorities, you know, and uh, perhaps and most likely reprioritizing what we focus on. Okay. What do I need to focus on? You know, uh, there are certain things that come with our conditions that require us to prioritize things um, maybe in a different order. You know, a lot of times, especially when you're pregnant or when you have physical conditions, you need to prioritize your connection with your body. You know, and uh, it doesn't matter if there's etheric uh, influences or collective influences or the corona situation or whatever. You know, if you're not in good connection with your body, if your physical health, if your physical immune system isn't right, okay, then, you know, everything else will be much harder, will be, you know, more adverse. Okay, and this is also here again aligned to the larger position or, or situation. You know, the problem that we're having right now, because by, by focusing on the death toll, guys, you know, all you're seeing is, is that there is a chance that you get infected. And when you get infected, it's, it's almost like in your mind, it equals death. And that is not true. You know, now the next consequence is like, oh, okay, so what can we do about this? All right, we, we're working on a vaccine, so all you got to do is wait for a vaccine. Is that actually true? Guys, what is the best way to prevent yourself from getting sick? Your own inner self-healing, your own inner ability to balance things out, to ward things off, whether it's an, an emotional, in a, in a mental, in an etheric sense, or physical sense. The best way to feel competent, the best way to learn how to trust in yourself, even in times such as pandemic, is to strengthen your inner ability to ward this off, to strengthen your sense of self, to strengthen 
your immune system to do everything you can, and that would be the prioritizing and the focus to make yourself feel stronger. All right, and then you can adjust your vision, you know, the, the next steps, you know, according to, you know, where you find yourself. But if you're losing the connection with, you know, what the most important things are that you actually can control and can choose, you know, the little choices, the everyday choices, and you cannot really develop a, a functional roadmap. And yes, then you feel lost, then you feel wobbly, then you feel confused then you don't know what to do. Yes. Heather's sharing, I'm experiencing a heightened sense of physical sensations in relation to these massive, massive weather changes. I've never felt my skin so sensitive like this before. It's hard to explain, but it's so prevalent and it's worth a mention. All right, so I, I'm not sure, Heather, can you clarify this for me? Are you talking about actual weather conditions or do you, are you talking about energetic weather conditions like um, how I often compare, you know, sort of outer energies, collective energies with, with outer energies? Uh, but if this is what you are referring to, to the, the, the your heightened sensitivity to outer energies and, uh, you know, your body actually responding to this, it can have two reasons. One is that you are actually paying attention, that you're more paying more attention to your physical responses to it. And this might come from actually spending more time and connecting more with your body and actually working with your body more. This is the cool thing that we observe here at Transcodes with, with all our self-healing modalities that once people start focusing on those things such as the body or you know emotional vocabulary and expressing your, your true feelings and you know become more aware of all the stuff like critical inner voice and pessim you know pessimism and 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 belief and mindsets and so forth they begin to feel this more uh, you're referring to actual uh, weather to actual weather so <laughs> this goes hand in hand though because weather is, is something that has multiple effects on our physical but also on our etheric system okay and our, our emotions many people know this so there was a change in in in, in uh, pressure uh, in the air in humidity um, there's electromagnetic changes and so forth and the more aligned you are with yourself the more you will actually sense this so my suspicion right now is that this isn't uh, some mystical type of uh, a thing that is happening for you. You are tuning more in with your true self, Heather, and as a consequence of that, you are becoming more sensitive in a good way. Not sensible, but sensitive, you know, in the sense that you are um, picking up on shifts more easily. And uh, for many of us who... Uh, you know, especially empaths and energetically sensitives, we've kind of cut ourselves off a bit from our bodies. As you actually grow more into your true self, as you become more true with yourself, you know, you also start focusing on your body a little more and then you will suddenly notice how many signals your body's been sending you all along and how much you've actually ignored this. And ignoring our inner signals, guys, here in, in context with regaining trust in ourselves is non-integrous. It fragments us. It's exactly why we cannot trust in ourselves, okay? Because we ignore our inner guidance. We ignore our common sense, our, our you know, heart sense, all right, that, that gives us this info. And why? Not because we're stupid or because we're not sensitive enough, because we're focusing on the wrong things. So it, it all, you know, the ability to really trust in yourself and then to convert this into thriving and, you know, success and so forth is, is really in connecting within and feeling deep inside of you and seeing yourself composed out of all these different parts. Your physical, your emotional, your mental, your social, your spiritual, and your energetic. And when you can connect with all these different layers of you, 
the picture that you get of yourself is much more integrated. This is when you begin to feel your own integrity. And I'm telling you something, guys, here. The most trust that you will ever gain in yourself is through feeling all of this, through feeling your own integrity. Because out of that comes everything. Comes your roadmap, comes your focus, comes your approach, comes your ability to adjust. Comes your trust in yourself. You don't need to know all the details. You don't need to have all the answers. But if you keep focusing on your flaws and what you don't have and what you're not good at and what you can't change, you're going to feel fragmented. And as a result of feeling fragmented, you're going to feel powerless. So what matters is how true you can be with yourself and how much you can allow yourself to feel into all these different parts, these different signals, Personally, I find that our energetic sensitivity, even though many of us have kind of suffered from it in the past because we didn't know how to deal with it, we weren't trained enough, but our energetic sensitivity is the biggest gift because it allows us to to sense things in a more differentiated way. And we have to lose our fear of this. Sometimes we have to risk things. Sometimes, you know, we, we have to really trust in our gut feeling, all right? And where does this, this trust in our gut feeling comes from? From feeling who we truly are, from feeling our essence and knowing what's integrous and what is not. Then we can begin to heal. And healing, you know, in the most sort of broad sense, is moving back to its wholeness, moving back to its balance. There's something here that I read uh, from Carolyn Miss, one of the pioneers of self-healing and energetic awareness, and she said, liars can't heal. And it sounds a bit harsh, but if you really feel into this, it's true. If we cannot be true with ourselves, we cannot feel whole, and if we cannot feel whole, we cannot heal. So the core of all our mistrust is the or mistrust in ourselves okay there's also mistrust towards the governments towards you know outer things and and most of that mistrust is probably valid okay because you can't trust them <laughs> because you don't agree with their approach you don't agree with their values you don't agree with you know their goals so what can you do you have to learn to trust in your own approach in your own values and you you have to form your own roadmap and once you find that you can learn to trust in yourself again and the biggest tool or the most important tool for this is being truth truthful with yourself and sometimes it means we have to yeah you know realize certain things where we're not treating ourselves with self-love where we're not giving ourselves what we truly need where we're not communicating how we truly feel where we you know, focus uh, on others or we blame others where we prefer to be a victim so we don't have to take responsibility for our choices. But every coach will tell you this, you know, that life is a constant adjustment to outer conditions, constant adjustment of the parameters in which you decide things, constant change, constant adjustment of your approaches and constant sort of bringing things back into integrity, always aligning it back to who you truly are. Out of that, then, you form the trust in yourself because you have a roadmap, you have a core sort of alignment, a compass needle that always shows into the same direction. And guys, your true self and all that comes with it, the values, the truth, the integrity, the wholeness, the balance, that never changes. That is the essence of you. That is always the same. Your other conditions change and you get older and all these things change. But your true self doesn't. Yes, so many signals. Annette is sharing, when I became aware of my possibility that I could be active during the virus situation, your fear of death disappeared. Thank you for sharing this, Annette. 
This is a wonderful close here for this truth talk. It's really just realizing that if you sit there and wait and externalize your power to something else, something outside of you, then no wonder you feel powerless because it's not in your control. You can go and refocus it on what you can control and that will give you a sense of power again. That will help you to take your life back, your choices back, your freedom back. Right? And that's then ultimately what can help you to find your essence and thus trust in yourself again. It's the little things, guys. Use your, don't like the word in English, but common sense, all right? Feel into who you truly are, what's truly important for you, how you want things, and how you can bring those into expression. Even if it's just, you know, writing songs or planting flowers or growing your own vegetables or baking a cake or, you know, being nice to your neighbors or facilitating, you know, things for other people. The road to happiness and fulfillment, guys, leads in you know, uh, really finding your true self, then finding your own integrity, and then expanding it through facilitating it for others, you know, going into the outer world and, you know, help other people to do the same, all right, sharing your gifts with others. So this is the capacity in which I come to you here every Sunday at noon, you know, it's an offering to you and uh, all of those all those of you who come or listen to the recording, you have just saturated yourself with some of these simple truths in life that help you uh, to find your essence again and to, to readjust your focus and change your conditions, all right, and trust in yourself again. Thank you very much for coming here. Again, if you want to take uh, advantage of our free online meditations. Every day we have an online meditation. Those are pre-recorded energy processes that our trans coaches here facilitate for you to come. The link is in the video. We also have uh, lots of YouTube videos, lots of uh, educational um, articles and, and uh, concepts and how-to videos and so forth that you can saturate yourself with to find this trust in yourself again. All right. Hope to see you next week, guys. It was wonderful to speak to you here today. Love you. See you next week. Bye-bye.